Ancestry Room, and this is a little video about tips and tricks uh, for Aurea because uh, I'm using an iPad 2 and Audiobus uh, recommend iPad 3 Plus to use with Audiobus. Um, but there's a few workarounds. Uh, I've been playing with this this morning, and since watching Ryan's other video, I've uh, learned quite a lot and got some great advice off the guys on the audio bus forum as well which I'll go into in a sec anyway just for kick off uh, I've gone into airplane mode so switched Wi-Fi off and no other apps running in the background as of yet first of all I'm just going to jump into Aurea and just go through what I've done so far okay so so far I've imported uh, two drum loops from Drumbeats Plus and just imported the first then pasted the second next to it, then copied the first and placed it there, so it's just a, a little beat. And then I recorded a little thing in, in Animoog. Okay, so this is where I encountered my first problem. Uh, I wanted to then record uh, another Animoog track, so just let me switch off Aurea again. Okay, so this is important. When you want to use Aurea with Audio Bus, load Audio Bus first. Because this is an iPad 12, it's already set on 512 frames, but if you're above, I'd recommend you go into 512. As an output, then we shall open Aurea first. That's loading my project back in. And then, now, here, if I was to um, if I was to load, say, Alchemy or uh, any other app other than Animoog, I would get a new track uh, in Aurea dedicated to that app. However, I wanted to record some more Animoog, but not on this track, obviously. I want to record some overdubs, but I just want to use Animoog. So then I tried to... So I thought to myself, OK, well, that's fine. I'll just close Animoog out and I'll reload Animoog. And let's see what happens. So I was thinking, yeah, I'm just going to get another Animoog track now in Aurea. So I've got like two Animoog tracks, but no, it's dedicated track two to Animoog. And as you can see, my little record is flashing now. So it wants to record over this and I don't want that. So <clears throat> I know that you can play around with the input matrix, but I had a mess with that and found that a little bit weird as well. Uh, I personally couldn't get it to work. So anyway, I went on to the Audio Plus forum, asked the question. Dave Magoo, bless him, got back to me straight away with this great fix. And I, I love this because it's actually easier than playing with the input matrix. So what we can do now is just deselect that so it's not flashing on record. Um, hit menu. Uh, hit add track. Stereo. Okay. So now it's given me another audio track. And all I'm going to do is hold this first tap selects tap and hold and I'm just gonna move that down to there so now I've got my Animoog track freed up for another for another track so let's just see if that works okay so let me just check I'm in time again still okay that's brilliant also, again, I just want to go through a couple of things that Ryan went through on his video. I, I prefer time format is bar and beats. I'm having an auto scroll and I have a counting set. Okay. And if we go down to settings here, um, everything is as it should be. The tempo is 100 because that is my working tempo for that particular loop time is 44 and I've had a counting of two bars okay so we can close that now now theoretically let's just pop back on over to any mood now I'm just gonna pick a another another kind of uh, sound here so right you can't hear anything because I have to oh. Uh, no, sorry, I have to arm Animoog, the Animoog track. Sorry, I record, I was recording audio. 
that will pop back on over there. Should be able to hear that now. Okay, so my original thing was, I think, plucked choir. Okay, so what I'm going to do there, because I want to work in the same scale and I, I haven't got the time to mess around, I'm going to lock that scale and go back to bass and let's have a go with juicy bass. I'm just going to play the audio track, see how this sounds. So I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to quickly record something over the top. So here we go with our two bar counting, hopefully. So that's that first workaround. Let's just deselect that from thing and let's have a quick play. Oh, let me just name this track as well as uh, Anime One. Okay, because I moved it down. That was the first Anime that I recorded. So I'm just going to take the bass one down a little bit, I think. Okay, so that's fine. Second thing I wanted to have a look at was um, uh, using some effects. Okay, so now I could theoretically take this out of Audio Bus and start to uh, uh, affect it more, but we're going to just see what happens if we just plow some effects onto the drums. So first of all, we're going to select our effects, take it off bypass, and I think we're going to just add a convolution. No, no. Okay, so we can't use convolution reverb with audio bus. But fine. We're going to use a classic verb with audio bus. Um, we're going to take the time of it down and drop it in the mix a little bit and just see how that sounds. <laughs> Okay, so let's give the drums a little bit of um, bounce there. Now let's uh, also, let's just put some retune on the drums as well, because this can sound nice sometimes. In fact, I think, yeah, that's okay. Let's just see how that sounds. <laughs> So now, oh right, that's better. This makes more sense now to what I want to do. I don't know if you can see this now, but I have the CPU start to freak out. So I've got a couple of effects running on the drum kit, um, and my CPU is at 42, 43%. I doubt you can see that with this camera. But what I'm going to do is, I'll take it off solo as well. I'm going to... Now, 
I don't I'm not going to be able to go much further if I just carried on like this so what I'm going to do is show you guys how to freeze the track as well so we go to effects and there's a little button here just just to the top right of the um, fader and we're just going to hit that and this is going to make a duplicate audio copy but with all the effects and everything embedded and when it's done or it will automatically switch off and disable all the effects now don't worry you can unfreeze any time for further tweaking now you can see this like a a snowflake appeared now okay and if we go back into our view here you'll see that it's grayed out okay I'm not going to be able to do nothing with that now I'm not going to can't move it I can't select it I can't nothing it's frozen in time forever however if we go back to the mixer you will see that my CPU usage has gone down to like 5% I can obviously still mix the drums volume so there you go so that's basically all I wanted to show you at this point here is how we can get more than one um, audio bus app because it, it sets up a dedicated track and like I said you know I, I went into the um, input matrix earlier and couldn't really work out the select audio bus but I still couldn't really work out that I wanted another thingy unless I maybe have to there is obviously a way to do it it's me but anyway the point is the point is that doing it that way from Dave Magoo was absolutely brilliant dead easy and a piece of cake and also I want to thank uh, Jared Sexton and Fun Junkie who also chucked in some great ideas and, and controller CPU because this is an iPad 2 we need to be able to lock it down and because it's a very very powerful very very nice program to use I want to be able to get the best out of it if you only have an iPad 2 like me alright guys that's brilliant um, hope some of that was helpful more videos on this soon Later.